Hello everyone. Today we shall be talking about quantization, which happens to be a module in the development life cycle of communication systems. Now, communication systems is a wonderful field. Um, your mobile phone, um, computers, the way we're communicating this information to one another. Have you ever wondered how all of that works? Well, the answer is communication systems. We have a lot of these signals that come out as an analog version, which gets stored in the digital format, and then transmission of that signal to multiple people in the video format, image format, audio format, all of this, the simple answer is communication systems. <coughs> Today we shall be looking at one of the small parts, a segment of the communication life cycle itself. Um, this uh, segment is called quantization. Now what is quantization? The very simplistic oversimplified answer to quantization is that it is when you have a signal coming in, uh, you have a signal broken down into small storable chunks and then on the other side that signal is reconfigured. This entire life cycle is called con quantization. Technically speaking, there are two phases in the quantization segment itself. There is the encoding and then there is the decoding. The encoding bit of quantization cycle is where we actually break an analog signal into its digital sampled parts. And the decoding bit is where we break a digital signal down, or we don't break it, sorry. We reconstruct a digital uh, samples into its almost same analog version. We shall be taking a look at uh, one of the algorithms of approaching the quantization technique. This is the most baseline algorithm that is used by anyone for approaching, understanding, getting their feet wet in with this idea of uh, quantization. It is called the Uniform Quantizer. <coughs> Essentially, I shall be using this drawing right here to kind of make you understand how the Uniform Quantizer works. Over here, we have a signal. Um, it could be a sound signal, it could be an image signal, it could be any sort of signal. It's just a very generic idea of what the signal is. Um, on the y-axis, we have the different uh, frequency values or the different amplitude values of the signal. And on the x-axis, we have the time for the signal. <clears throat> Using this example, this particular signal, we have uh, the segments that the signal is broken up into the different amplitude. For the sake of clarity, let's just assume that it is the amplitude that we are taking into consideration. You have the amplitude that is ranging from the minimum for the signal is minus 3 amps and the maximum for the signal is plus 3 amps. Now, we one of the first steps for the uniform quantizer is to break the signal down into equivalent segments. So we break it down to 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 0 to minus 1, minus 1 to 2, minus 2, minus 2 to minus 3. Uh, equivalent one bit, uh, one segments. <coughs> the way to address these segments is to use a very uh, unique representational identifier. The way we do that is uh, since we have six identifiable segments over here, we use two to the three scheme, which is eight, eight unique bits that we could allocate. Why eight for six uh, segments? Well, we cannot use four, which would be two to the two. Um, and that is how we end up with eight particular uh, uh, three bit signal to identify eight uh, or six unique segments. So we have given these, uh, these specific values using three bits. 0, 0, 0 for a signal between the value of the signal between minus 3 to minus 2, uh, between minus 2 to minus 1, 0, 0, 1, minus
minus 1 to 0, it would be 0, 1, 0, and so on and so forth, as you can see in this graph. So, <coughs> during our encoding of the signal itself, we take the different time quantas, and essentially, if the signal is falling under that particular uh, interval, we essentially just store it using that interval representation. So for instance, over here at time quanta one, one, we have the signal at uh, between zero and one, which happens to be the representation value of zero, one, one. So we will store it as zero, one, one. At time quanta of <coughs> two, we will store it as one, zero, zero. At time quanta of three, we will store it again as one, zero, zero. Do you see this pattern? I hope you do. This, this scheme right here, this particular step, it constitutes towards the encoding of the signal. Now we move towards the decoding part, and this is the kicker for the uniform quantizer. Um, the way the uniform quantizer works, and the very simplistic algorithm that you get to see now, is that each and every one of these representation values is associated with exactly the center of these segments. So 0, 1, 1 over here would be between 0 and 1. So this would actually be the value 0 0.5. Uh, 1, 0, 0, which is between 1 and 2, would actually be 1.5, and so on and so forth. During the decoding scheme itself, we see that this is the sequence of the bits that we have used to represent the particular signal that we have had over there. Um, now all we have to do is give these the specific values of associated with the um, centroid for uh, the intervals. So 0, 1, 1 would be 0 0.5, 1, 0, 0 would be 1.5, and so on and so forth. <coughs> This, this particular scheme is very simplistic. Um, the reconstruction of the signal is fairly noisy because noise, the concept of noise, is where you're losing a lot of uh, very important valid information. This signal right here is the pure analog signal. When you will reconstruct this particular signal using the representation values that you use for the uniform quantizer, you will definitely not get back the original signal, but it will be a fairly close approximation of, of what it originally was. Fairly cl close approximation is also too much of a, it's too far ahead. It will be, you would be able to understand what's the shape of the signal like, the close. Next, we shall be taking a look at uh, an optimized technique for the quantizer which is the Lord's algorithm. So now we will be looking into the Lord's Max algorithm. The Lord's Max algorithm is an optimized out quantization technique. The way it works is that it is an iterative and error correcting algorithm. That's very important to remember. It has four steps and we shall be looking into the four steps over here. The first step is that you choose an arbitrary m, m being the number of intervals for you to expand for the signal. The second step is this is where exactly the iterative aspect of the say, like the algorithm kicks in. The second step is where you choose for each iteration, you're choosing, you're first of all looking at the boundary of the interval. So for instance, this is your interval, you have uh, bj to be the first and bj plus one to be the edge of your interval. What you're essentially doing is that you're taking the midpoint of this particular interval to be your representation point. Now if you recall, this is exactly the same step as was in the uniform quantization technique. But this is where it actually gets different because in the Lloyd's algorithm, you're also keeping track of the mean squared error. What is the mean squared error? It is nothing but the distance between, the, the difference between the error, uh, between um, the different points that you could take 
within that interval itself to give you a more accurate answer. <clears throat> the way it works is that you have a certain probability density function of where a signal is more populated, where it can provide you with more information. And the most particularly important representation point within that interval will be where your signal is the most heavily populated. So for instance, if my signal is like that, and then like that, I would rather have my representation point somewhere over here than somewhere over here. So essentially we are keeping a track of the mean squared error and we want to minimize it as much as possible. Hence we move on to the third step where we are actually calculating the mean squared error. And up until the point it is not negligible or as close to zero, we keep looping over and over again till we actually get the most uh, uh, optimum point within an interval to choose the mean squared error. And that's how the Lloyd's Max algorithm works.